What's up guys, Lifting here. This is a video guide for my Crit Split Arrow Frenzy build. The build is optimally played as the Ranger, but it can be played as both the Shadow or the Duelist as well, if you prefer. And I should say that before we begin guys, that this video is very similar to my Crit Tornado Shot guide that I just uploaded a few days ago. The only difference is, is the offensive skill gem setups and the gameplay footage for this character. The skill tree progression and gear recommendations is the same as in the previous video. So if you've already watched the tornado shot guide, then you may recognize some of this concept. Anyway, let's get into it. The build scales really well into late game, and it is able to deal with the highest level maps and bosses, including at Siri, and it is fairly cheap to get going. And I should note that the gear you see on this character here in the background is very mediocre. And I want to strongly emphasize that the clear speed, while it already being good, can be much faster with better gear. And the point I'm trying to make here is that the build is budget and beginner friendly, while at the same time it also has the potential, if you obtain good gear, to get amazing DPS and insane clear speed. Anyway, for defenses, this build utilizes the acrobatic ski stone together with having a high amount of evasion, life, and by using arctic armor. And I of course also recommend using a jade flask to increase your evasion rating. The build further utilizes 6 frenzy charges and 4 power charges to significantly increase the damage, attack speed, and the critical strike chance of the character. Alright, let me show you the skill gem setup we use for this character, and let's start with the most interesting ones. The split arrow setup and the frenzy single target setup. For split arrow, I recommend the following. Split arrow, chain, faster attacks, physical projectile attack damage, added fire damage if you have a 5 link, and life gain on hit if you have a 6 link. And the way this works is that chain makes all the arrows shot from your split arrow chain multiple times in between the monsters, thus greatly increasing your damage. Faster attacks, physical projectile attack damage, and added fire damage all serve to increase the damage of split arrow, and life gain on hit will instantly heal you for a certain amount every time you hit an enemy. Life gain on hit is additionally a great tool for combating reflect damage with this build. For the single target setup, I recommend the following. Frenzy, faster attacks, physical projectile attack damage, slower projectiles, added fire damage, and lastly critical hit damage. If you don't have a 6 link, you can take out critical hit damage, and if you don't have a 5 link, you should leave out added fire damage. And Frenzy is an excellent single target skill. Every time you successfully hit an enemy, you will generate a Frenzy charge, which further adds to your damage. And the support gems for this skill all directly increases the damage of Frenzy, thus making it a potent single target skill for whenever you need to kill bosses or strong rare monsters. And to effectively spread your curse, I recommend the following setup. Split arrow, chain, curse on hit and assassin's mark. Split arrow when leveled shoots multiple projectiles and together with chain that makes these projectiles chain additional times between each monster which means you'll be hitting multiple targets at once. This makes this setup perfect for applying your Assassin's Mark Curse. And in case you don't know, this curse works by increasing your Critical Strike chains and your Critical Strike multiplayer, thus making you deal more damage. And together with that, it also increases your chance of generating power charges when killing afflicted enemies. Next on, to improve the defenses of the build, I recommend that you self-cast Enduring Cry to obtain Endurance Charges and then rely on a cast when damage taking Immortal Call setup to proc whenever necessary. For that setup, you will need a 4 link consisting of Enduring Cry, Cast When Damage Taken, Immortal Call, and Increased Duration. I recommend that you level Cast When Damage Taken to about level 9, Immortal Call to a level 11, while Increased Duration and Enduring Cry can be leveled all the way to max level. This setup will make it so that as long as you have your Endurance Charges up, then whenever you take a big hit of damage, then the Cast When Damage Taking Skill Gem is going to proc and cast Immortal Call for you, thus making you immune to any physical damage for a few seconds and giving you time to get into a safer position. Endurance Charges will, whenever up, additionally add to your survivability by increasing your physical damage reduction and providing you with life regeneration. And lastly, for your utility setup, you need to link the following. Blood Rage, Arctic Armor, Hatred, and Vault Grace. If you prefer a more offensive route, you can use Vault Haste instead of Vault Grace. Blood Rage, when activated, will give you a 25% chance on monster kill to generate a Frenzy Charge. And besides that, it will also grant you Life Leech for your attacks. This skill is absolutely amazing for this build, as it will allow you to constantly have 6 Frenzy Charges up, 
which greatly improves the damage of your character. The downside of Blood Rage is that it makes you lose 4% of your maximum life per second as physical damage. However, since we will be picking up some nice life regeneration nodes throughout the skill tree, you'll be able to greatly slow down this degen to the point where it's almost non-existent. And for Arctic Armor it works so that when it is activated it will reserve 25% of your total mana pool, but in turn it will grant you increased physical and fire damage reduction. And it will also apply a chill ground effect so that when enemies are following you they will be slowed down, thus making kiting easier. And the Hatred skill will greatly increase your damage by adding a percentage of cold damage to your attacks based on your physical damage. But it will of course also reserve 50% of your mana when activated. And I should note here that if you prefer a more defensive setup, then using Grace to increase your evasion instead of Hatred is a completely viable choice as well. And lastly, Vault Grace will grant you a temporary large boost to both dodge and spell dodge rating when activated, thus making you indirectly more tanky. And again, as mentioned earlier, if you want to be more offensive, you can use Vault Haste instead which temporarily grants a boost to your attack, cast and movement speed. And before we continue onwards, let me give you a quick tip when it comes to leveling this character. And I should say here guys, that leveling from the beginning of the game as a bow user can be somewhat slow. It is however definitely doable. You will have split arrow available to you as a quest reward from Tarkley after killing Hillock straight when you get into Lion's Eyes Watch. From here you simply add in chain, faster attacks and physical projectile attack damage and that's pretty much everything you need to level with. And then eventually when you get yourself the 5 link or the 6 link you add in added fire damage and life gain on hits. And I highly highly recommend that if you decide to level as a bow user that you buy yourself a death's heart bow. In order to find this you need to go to poe.trade and search for this bow in the league you're playing in. And they can usually be found from anywhere in between 1 Chaos Orb to 5 Chaos Orbs depending on the rolls. So they are pretty cheap and you should easily be able to obtain one of these. And this unique bow will carry you all the way from level 32 when you can start using it and into maps. I will leave a link to PoE trade in the description of the video. However, if you prefer a faster way of leveling up, then you can instead of course level up using a flame totem skill gem together with an intelligence amulet and a two-handed weapon together with either molten strike or static strike. However, this will require some muling of skill gems, so that's up to you to decide whether you want to or not. And if you're curious about where and how uh, these skill gems can be obtained, then check out the PoE wiki link that I have put in the description. Alright, so what you're looking at here guys is the full skill tree for the build. It's 113 points to complete the full build. Before I show you how to progress and spend your skill points as you level up, I did in the beginning mention that you can level this as a dualist and a shadow as well. If you want to level it as a dualist, you simply have to go through this pathing and then branch into Art of the Gladiator and the remainder of the tree. If you want to level it as a shadow, you instead have to pick up the physical damage attack nodes here and then branch into coordination and the rest of the tree. However, I did level this as a ranger and I do that because I really like this starting skill note here that grants you 8% increased attack speed, which is very efficient for a single cost point. And now let me show you how I suggest you spend your skill points as you level up. So we're gonna reset the skill tree here. And your first goal as a ranger is to gain some survivability, some attack speed and some movement speed. And you do that by first of all, picking up the attack speed as number one. After that, you go through Evasion and Life and into Finesse for the 8% increased attack speed, the Accuracy rating and the 20 plus to Dexterity. From Finesse, I suggest picking up Heart of the Oak for 8% increased maximum life and the 1% of life regenerated per second that's going to help you with your Blood Rage degen. And from Heart of the Oak, I also suggest picking up Primal Spirit for the mana regeneration that it provides, but also because of the 20 plus to Strength and Intelligence that it provides, as this will help you level up your other skill gems. From Primal Spirit, I suggest you head down here, pick up Quick Step and the remaining attack and movement skill node. Quick Step will grant you 6% increased attack speed and 4% increased movement speed, which is great for a build that relies on kiting. From Quick Step, we move down towards the Duelist tree and into Fury Bolts. Fury Bolts will grant you increased projectile damage, increased accuracy rating and 20 plus to strength, which again is great as you will need strength to level up your skill gems. From Fury Bolts, we head into Art of the Gladiator for the 12% increased attack speed, the 20% increased accuracy rating, and the added benefit of you now ignoring all movement penalties from armor. 
which basically means that if you wear armor now, it will no longer slow down your movement speed. From out of the Gladiator, we also pick up Bravery for the increase to evasion rating and the 8% increase to maximum life. And now your next goal from here is to gain some mana leech, some bow damage and get the acrobatics keystone. And to do that, you need to head back over here and then branch your way into Spirit Void. Spirit Void will give you 0.4% of physical attack damage leached as mana, but more importantly, it will give you 2 plus mana gained for each enemy hit by your attacks. And since you're using Split Arrow linked with Chain, you'll be hitting multiple targets, which means you'll instantly gain back lots of mana, which will allow you to keep using your skills without running out of mana. From Spirit Void, it is time to pick up some more bow damage, and we do that by picking up Deadly Draw up here together with the skill notes that grant you attack speed and some accuracy. Deadly Draw itself gives you 12% increased physical damage with bows and 12% increased attack speed with bows. It also gives you that 20% increased arrow speed, which is actually a nice bonus as well. From Deadly Draw, I suggest grabbing a bit more life and you can do that by grabbing Herbalism over here for the 10% increased maximum life and the additional bonuses to flask usage, which are actually not to be underestimated. From Herbalism, we pick up more bow damage by picking up Heavy Draw for the very nice 24% increased physical damage with bows, together with these three skill notes that grant you 15% increased physical damage with bows. After that, you pick up Acrobatics. But keep in mind that while Acrobatics grant you a nice 30% chance to dodge attacks, it will also give you 50% less armor and energy shield together with 30% less chance to block spells and attacks. So with that in mind, you need to make sure that when you spec into acrobatics that you're primarily wearing evasion based gear, otherwise it will reduce the effect of your armor gear or your energy shield gear. After having picked up acrobatics, your next goal is to increase the damage and life of your character. And you do that by going up towards the shadow part of the tree, pick up quickness for the 20% increased physical damage, the 5% increased movement speed and some dexterity. Then pick up Sniper for the 20% increased projectile damage and the 10% increased projectile speed. After that, head into Coordination for the 12% increased attack speed. And from Coordination, you should go up and pick up Blood Siphon for the very nice 12% increased maximum life, the 5 life gained on kill and the 20 plus to strength together with the remaining skill note. And then finally into Trickery for the 20% increased elemental damage, which is good because you're using Heralds and the intelligence and increased critical strike chains. Getting intelligence at this point in time is actually a very nice quality of life improvement as you will otherwise only have 34 at this point in time. So by picking up triggery, you'll be able to further level up your skill gems. With that said, I of course suggest picking up Thieves Craft down here if you need the intelligence to level up your skill gems further. And then finally, I suggest picking up Revenge of the Hunted down here for the 12% increased physical damage, the 18% increased evasion rating, the 4% increased maximum life, together with the other skill notes here that all grants 8% increased evasion rating and 4% increased maximum life. And now you've gotten to the point in the game where you want to start increasing your critical strike chains for this build. And the best way to do that, in my opinion, is by going down towards the duelist tree again and then picking up King of the Hill for an 80% increased critical strike chance with bows and the benefit of you now knocking back enemies whenever you get a critical strike chance with a bow. After King of the Hill, I suggest heading over here and picking up Lethality together with the remaining two bow critical strike chains and multiplier skill notes. From Lethality, I suggest heading up here, picking up Heartseeker together with the critical strike chains skill notes and at this point in time, I suggest grabbing a bit more life to improve your survivability. And the way I suggest doing this is by going down here and picking up Thick Skin for the 10% increase to maximum life and the 8% chance to avoid elemental status ailments. So things such as Freeze, Shock and Burn. After Thick Skin, I suggest heading back towards the Shadow Tree and picking up Assassination. If you want, you can at this point in time pick up the remaining Critical Strike Chains notes. If you don't want to, you can save these for later. And you're now at a point in the game where if you haven't already, you definitely should start to use Blood Rage to generate your Frenzy Charges. But in order to use Blood Rage, you need to have enough life regeneration to be able to sustain it. And of course, you want to be able to use as many Frenzy Charges as possible. So to be able to sustain Blood Rage, we're going to move down towards the Duelist Tree Pick up the strength note down here, 
then life and then golems plot for a 10% increased maximum life and a very nice 1.6 of life regenerated per second. If you still cannot sustain your blood rage, I would suggest picking up Master of the Arena up here. And while it doesn't provide too much to your build, that 1% of life regenerated per second will make a big difference in terms of sustaining blood rage and it will also give you that 20 plus to strength, which again can be very nice to level up your skill gym. So if you are struggling to sustain your blood rage, then pick up Master of the Arena. It's a good choice for this situation. However, since I haven't had any issues myself, I'm gonna leave this out for now. All right, time to pick up Frenzy Charges, guys. And we're gonna do that by first of all, picking Savagery down here for plus one to maximum Frenzy Charges. Then we're gonna move over towards the Ranger part of the tree, pick up the Evasion per Frenzy Charge skill note that will give you 4% increased Evasion rating per Frenzy Charge, which again is pretty sweet since we'll be having either six or seven frenzy charges depending on your bandit quest reward choice after that pick up fervor and from fervor we're gonna pick up the remaining and last frenzy charge frenetic by utilizing all of these frenzy charges you will deal significantly more damage and now all that remains is to pick up some additional life some accuracy and some damage and crit skill notes and what i suggest here is to pick up depth perception for the 16% increased accuracy rating, the 20 plus to dexterity and the 20 plus to increased critical strike chains. The skill notes here will grant you increased critical strike chains and accuracy as well. And now that you're up here, I also suggest picking up Blood Drinker together with the remaining skill note here. Blood Drinker by itself will give you 8% increased maximum life and 0.4 of physical attack damage leached as life, which is a really nice bonus as well. And then to gain some more damage, I suggest picking up Avatar of the Hunt down here for that 25% increased physical damage with bones, the 3% increased movement speed, and the skill note that grants you a nice 20% increased additional accuracy rating with bows. And this is basically the entire skill tree, guys. If you want to use jewels, I will recommend picking up this jewel socket here together with this jewel socket down here. These are the most cost-efficient jewel sockets you will have available to you. Oh, and don't forget the last life point down by thick skin. And now the last thing we're going to talk about is what kind of affixes and stats you should aim for on your gear for your character to make it as powerful as possible. And I should of course mention that being elemental resistance capped is required and absolutely mandatory for this build when you reach Merciless. But when you are resistance capped, these are the defensive stats in priority you need to focus on getting on your gear. Number one is life, and I suggest you try to aim for at least 70 plus on each rare item. Secondly, you want evasion. Thirdly, I recommend getting both strength and intelligence on your gear as it will help you level up your skill gems. And with strength, you also have the additional bonus of getting some extra life. And lastly, I recommend getting some chaos resistance. Chaos resistance isn't too important, so don't spend a lot of currency to try and get that. It should just be considered as a nice bonus, however. So to improve your damage, your offensive stat priority is as following. Number one is increased flat and percentage based physical damage rolls on your bow. However, you can also get additional flat physical damage on both rings and amulets. Secondly, you should aim for increased critical strike chains. Thirdly, critical strike multiplier and both crit chains and crit multiplier can be found on bows but also on amulets. As a fourth priority, I suggest getting increased attack speed, which can be found on your bow, but also on rings and gloves. And when it comes to improving the damage of the build, the bow is by far the most important piece of equipment. And for this build, you optimally, at least for endgame, need to get a bow that has good rolls of increased physical damage, added physical damage, local crit chance, and either attack speed or critical strike multiplier. Like for instance, the bow you see here on this picture. For this build, you should also get two Seething Divine Life Flasks, one Iron Skin Granite Flask, a Quicksilver Flask, and either a Ruby Topaz or Sapphire Flask, depending on the content you're farming. I also recommend crafting the suffix of Staunching onto one of the Life Flasks as well. This will make it so that it stops bleed effects when pressed. And while this build can benefit from multiple unique items, I am in this video only going to recommend two. The first one is Lightning Coil. And this excellent chest armor will make you significantly tankier by providing you with extra evasion, life, and a 30% physical damage reduction taken as lightning damage bonus. The only downside to this unique is that it will give you minus 60% lightning resistance, which means all of your other gear will have to compensate for this to keep your lightning resistance capped. 
If you can manage that, then this armor is a must-have if you care about your character's health. It is absolutely amazing. The other unique item I'm going to recommend is the pretty awesome Rat Snares Helmet, which is going to provide you with a ton of benefits such as increased critical strike chains, evasion, attack speed, item rarity and movement speed. And besides that you get the awesome feature of being 10% smaller, which has no impact on your character's performance, so don't worry about that. All in all, it is a very solid choice for a helmet for this type of character. And for additional unique item recommendations, go to my official Path of Exile forum post for this build. The link is in the description. And now lastly, for the Bandit quest rewards, you should help Oak on normal difficulty for the extra HP. On Cruel, you should either pick up the 8% increased attack speed by helping Creighton, or grab the 16% increased physical damage by helping Oak. Either of these choices are about equally good in my opinion, but personally I would go with the attack speed as I like having a fast attack animation, which makes my character feel more mobile and helps with kiting. Anyway, on Merciless I suggest helping Alira for the plus one to maximum power charges, which is going to increase your critical strike chains. However, if you want, you can instead help Kratin for the plus one to frenzy charges, which is going to overall increase your damage. And that's it guys, remember if you have any questions, then the best way to contact me is to join me at my Twitch live stream. The link is below in the description. Otherwise, feel free to ask your questions below in the comments or by going to my forum post on the Path of Exile forums. I will do my best to answer any question that haven't already been answered in this video. Now remember to subscribe for more Path of Exile content. Thank you for watching and bros, do you even nerd.